I'm going to tell you something, and I'm going to be completely upfront and honest with you. I have always find, found it when people say, well, if God exists, he must be evil. We must have a malevolent monster up there in heaven because he's just taking joy in the pain and the suffering of his creation. I have always found that argument. I, I just want to laugh at people that say that because it is so absurdly illogical. And for me to declare that, that's a great point right there. For me to declare that, I'm not relying on my knowledge of scripture. I'm relying on the fact that I'm conscious. I don't mean to insult anyone when I say this, but just open your eyes and look around. And you tell me if the world that we live is one that was designed by a malevolent, cruel, sadistic monster that loves seeing the suffering of his people. Do you know how flatly absurd that is? I'll give you an example. This week, two times I got to take my kids to school in the morning. Okay, because uh, Jenny normally takes them, but she was subbing somewhere else, so I took them to school. And when we pull up in front of the elementary school, um, Addie gets out first, and then Bristol gets out after her, and they say goodbye. And then Grayson gets out, and he's a little little guy, so he has to slide down the GMC onto the ground. His backpack's bigger than him, and so he goes hoofing it up to the front door. And both days, he got up to the front door, and he turned around, and that little backpack's sticking up behind him, and he just looks and he smiles, and he goes like this. Okay. If you are not a parent, I cannot explain this to you. If you are a parent, I don't have to explain this to you. You know what that does right here. I texted Jenny about it. I said, that little cute dude, I just want to go and scoop him up. Now, here's my question. If we live in a universe created by a sadistic monster, would he create something that would allow me to feel like that? If God takes pleasure in our pain, isn't that what I should be experiencing all the time? This doesn't fit into the concept of a universe created by a moral monster. Music, you know what I love to do in the fall? Maybe I'm alone, but I love to drive through the country with the windows down in the fall when it's beautiful temperature outside and turn my music up. And my music, it's, I mean, I'm blaring the Bon Jovi and the Bruce Springsteen. It's as good as it gets. And don't you say one single word about it and judge me like that. Anyway, I don't know what it is for you, but I doubt that I'm alone. Maybe you're into classical music. Maybe you're into rap. Maybe you're into the honky tonk tailgate tour. I don't know what it is for you, but here's my question. Would a, would a cruel and a sadistic God create a universe that has music? It doesn't even make sense that he would design something like that if he enjoyed seeing the pain and the suffering of his people. You can be the poorest person on earth and still find your way to a beach. And I've seen some of your Instagram accounts. I know how moved you are by the sunset over the Indiana farmhouse. I, I know, I've seen it before. My question is, would a, would a moral monster create, are you getting what I'm saying? It's absurdly illogical if you just stop and think about it. Now I'm making everybody uncomfortable, right? Okay, sex. God designed sex. He could have done human reproduction in any way he wanted to. He could have made it so you touch elbows. You want to have a baby? Yeah, I'd like to have a baby. <laughs> Boop. Boop. Like that. He could have done that, but he did not do that. He created something. Oh, stop it. You're like a little girl. It's like a junior high class. Anyway... He could have done it however he wanted and he created something. The human beings really, does that fit into the concept of a universe created by a moral monster? Those of you that haven't had sex, you, you, you haven't uh, done that yet or whatever, I've seen you at the buffet line, okay? And I'm not getting the impression that you're suffering too much. I mean, your waistline may be suffering a little bit, but you're not suffering. Now listen, if I'm a cruel and a sadistic God, of course I create my human creations to need food to survive but I'm not gonna make it a pleasurable experience. I'm not creating chocolate. I'm creating stuff that they have to gag down. I'm gonna make it so their esophagus doesn't open up wide enough and it's so painful, or they gotta ram the chicken leg through their stomach in order to eat. If I, I know that's awful, where do I, I don't know. I don't know, maybe there's something wrong with me. But anyway, if I'm a sadistic monster, that's how I create the universe. None of this stuff is the handiwork of a cruel or a sadistic God. I don't think I have to belabor the point. Open your eyes. This is not a universe that was designed by somebody who is cruel. I'll tell you what it fits with a lot more than that sadistic God narrative. Is this right here in James? Every good and perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. Every good thing that I have in my life is because of God's influence. God is goodness. So therefore, everything he designed reflected his good character. Go back to Genesis 1. Every day that he created something, what was it termed? Good. 
because God is goodness. And because of that, everything he designs and everything he touches and everything he creates is good. God created perfection, no pain, no sorrow, total moral innocence. We are dwelling with him. Genesis 2 tells the story. That is the world that God designed because God is good and God is goodness. So what happened? Well,